Hello and welcome to Crystal Podcast on iCode Media. Today, again, on bonus episode number 55, we're going to talk about the cognitive anchor of the annual exam. So I, again, I have Dr. Kyle Cludy on today talking about um, what, you know, what is it, Kyle, that where do we get this belief or this kind of habit that is formed where, gosh, anytime I ask a patient to come back less than one year, it's going to be weird. So where does that, where does that kind of internal struggle come from, Kyle? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I, do you, you, you know, I don't know if you're willing to admit it. I'm willing to admit I have it in me. Um, you probably do as well. It's that oh, internal yeah, struggle. Yeah, I, yeah. You asked the question. Yeah. So I would say it's really hard. I mean, you, you have to break that habit, right? Like, like yeah. I, I don't, I'm, I haven't entirely broken it, but I will, st- but I've broken it largely, but I will still find myself like defaulting to the thing of like, well, can't I just do this all today? And I can't, I just yeah. see them back in a year. And I, and I, and yeah. I know that, that like, there's, you know, we talk about this all the time, but I still find myself like, okay, well, why should I see them back sooner? So yeah. Why do you think that happens? Yeah, I think, I think it happens because we, you know, when we go back to optometry school and nothing against any, you know, anybody that taught us or the, any of the schools that we went to, but there is this, what we call what we would call a cognitive anchor. And that's kind of like the first thing that we learned that you just can't quite like, you can't psychologically get over, you know, that basically like anchors you to this type of a protocol or a plan. And when we learned that the yearly comprehensive exam is kind of like the, the meat and potatoes of our profession, I think that oftentimes anchors us it, it, and it really actually limits us oftentimes from from scheduling patients back sooner than that, uh, or, or just it creates like a false comfort, or I, I should say a false discomfort, like it creates a tension in us that really shouldn't be there, right? So does, you know, when you think about it, and I don't, I've never asked a primary care physician this, I've never asked a dentist this, but, you know, do they have a, are, are they have a limiting belief about like, would a dentist feel uncomfortable asking you to come back any sooner than six months? Would a primary care physician ever feel uncomfortable saying, you know what, I need to check this out or monitor this. I'd like to get you back in a, you know, a month or next, you know, in three, 90 days to check your blood pressure again. I don't think, I don't know, but my speculation is that I don't think they have those uh, limits in their mindset for, for their care. And for some reason, I, I, I think we do. I think we often kind of stumble over that. Just like you said, we... We want to like, well, we'll just do it all here today. Then we don't have to tell the patient to come back sooner than the year because I, I, I think we probably have that anchor in our own minds and it's something that are, that's in our patients' minds as well. So that's probably an aspect I haven't really thought about. It's, but I just thought about it now is that it's probably in our patients' minds as well and that creates more tension. Well, yeah, I mean, I think to, to amplify your point, I mean, the first thing where it starts in us is, is – when we provide comprehensive care, right? In comprehensive care clinic, most of the time you have two options. One option is we're going to see this patient back every year. And that's what we'll just tell the patient. If there's a problem that occurs, if there's something that we're suspicious about during that comprehensive care clinic, we have one of two options. And it largely depends on how our checkout is going to handle them or our attending doctor is going to handle them. Again, it's not a knock against our training. It's, it means we're, there's, in my there, I don't know if I can say this enough times. There is nobody better trained than optometrists to provide comprehensive eye care to patients in the in the entire country. It's just Amen. it is a fact. But the challenge with that with that training is that when one of two things happen in, in comprehensive care clinic, maybe you call it primary care clinic, maybe you call it, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know, uh, I can't remember what other terms I've heard, but but anyway, it's that it's that we're going to do the annual eye exam today at this clinic. And, um, and that, that clinic is, we, you know, you go to your attending and you see something suspicious and the attending either says, okay, let's send it over to this specialty clinic to evaluate that specialty, uh, or we'll, we'll go in and run a bunch of tests during that comprehensive exam. And then we tell the patient everything is good. And then they come back next year. So those are the kind of the two scenarios, um, within comprehensive eye care that, that we get, uh, in our training. And then you couple that 
with, you know, Kyle, I think there's, we, we do have this situation that we should call out is that, you know, if you're going to your primary care doctor, they bill everything to your medical insurance. They just have one insurance. That's all they have. That's the only option. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when, when they see you, it's, it's their medical. And then you come back the next three months later, it's your medical. And you come back nine months later, it's your medical, right? And so in our situation, and, and dentists don't have the same thing because dentists just have dental, right? So their dental insurance allows every six months, but then they also have this other coverage for things like fillings and root canals and other stuff that that goes on that might have additional coverage underneath the dental plan. So that's what they mm-hmm. are used to. But what we have is we have vision insurance, right? And so then the vision insurance kind of reinforces this model of like, okay, we're going to see, we're going to set the patient's expectations and the doctor's expectations that there's a one time a year kind of quote unquote covered visit. Maybe there's just a low copay, no deductible, no, you know, no, nothing beyond that. And, and so again, to your point, the patients are expecting this as well, but then they, they're being sold that, that if they're, if they have vision problems, it's all going to be underneath there. Again, whether they're blatantly sold that, or that's what they hear, that's what they hear. So then they think they can only come back once a year. Um, and so all of those things kind of come into play with this cognitive anchor of, you know, of, of annual eye care that makes us uncomfortable, that makes the patients uncomfortable. So what's our solution? What's our action plan to, to kind of take steps to unanchor that cognitive Mm -hmm. annual exam? Well, you won't be surprised at my answer. My answer usually is always something about our mindset. So first and foremost, it's to, to be aware of it, right? To understand that this is probably something that is is biasing you, uh, if that's a word. I don't know if that's a word, but uh, if it, it is a bias in you that you have to be aware of. But also, it's just to be really proactive about it. It's, it's kind of, it really boils down to two things. It's one is uh, have, have in mind the like disease protocols and exactly the type of conditions that you plan on seeing more often than yearly. Right. And there are, you know, pretty much every chronic condition, almost every chronic condition, we probably can, we can make a case that we're going to see those things, uh, sooner than, uh, uh, not everything, but there are many chronic conditions, you know, any sort of, uh, glaucoma patient, glaucoma suspect. Uh, there's a good argument for seeing them every three to six months, right? Well, it's not Dry even just a good argument, Kyle. I mean, it's our, it's a, it's guidelines, right? Like it's right. clinical practice guidelines, right. preferred practice patterns. The European Glaucoma Society tells us what we should be doing, and almost none of them, you know, tell us to do all these tests one time a year and never see the patient back. It's, it's right, like, exactly. Know, Dues two that tells us to follow up with patients when we're talking about dry eye. So I mean, it's not just yeah. Kyle Cludie saying I, we can right. make the case. I mean, it's it is really like look dive into what the protocols tell us to do, um, or and the evidence tells us to do, and it's not just doing it all at one time. Right, and it's it, it's exactly that. It's refining your protocols and making sure your protocols are aligned with clinical practice guidelines. And those are readily available. You can find those. Uh, We also have uh, practice protocols that we offer on our comprehensive optometry simplified course that you can find. And, and, and if you are a member of our community, you have unlimited on-demand access to to those protocols. And those are super going to be super helpful for a lot of doctors, but it's, it's knowing your protocols, it's refining your protocols. And it's also just having like, uh, a key phrase that we, you and I have talked about a lot, uh, a key phrase in your, in your like uh, toolbox that says, it starts out, you know, Mrs. Jones, I'm concerned about this, right? It's just starting off with that, you know, to, it's, it's saying, Hey, I've finalized good news. I've got your glasses prescription ready to go. I've got your year supply. Con- I've approved you for a year supply of contact lenses. However, I'm concerned about this today. And insert whatever that is, where maybe it's uh, corneal SPK, maybe it's a suspicious optic nerve, maybe it's family history of macular degeneration, uh, any one of those, you know, risk factors, or maybe it's frank, uh, you know, uh, really obvious disease that we're seeing. I'm concerned about this. Therefore, our clinical practice guidelines recommend that we see you back in whatever, you know, interval you want want to say. But it's just having that phrase, that key phrase, 
uh, at top of mind because when somebody, when, when your patient hears that you're, Hey, I've got everything finalized for you, but I'm concerned about this. If they hear that, uh, that is going to kind of hook them in and they're not going to put up any fuss about, Oh, my doctor's concerned about this issue. It's going to be supernatural to have them back sooner than a year to further evaluate that issue. And that's, that's really the key is like having, you know, having those two things kind of armed up, ready to go is, is looking at your protocols and then having that verbiage ready to go for you. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, I want to articulate this point as finely as I can take manage vision care out of the equation for this for a second. You know, if I think about like a patient that comes in and they've got great coverage on their medical, that makes me com- like happy where like, look, I'm getting paid for the refraction and the comprehensive exam to the level that I think is appropriate. And, um, and still, even then, I will not do justice to a patient that might have my bomine gland dysfunction or inferior SPK, you know, let's say one plus inferior SPK, um, and, uh, or any of the other number of things that you have mentioned. There is no way I'm going to do justice for that patient and provide them as good of care as I need to provide them to manage the complexities that I've just described. My bomine gland is function with inferior SPK. I mean, that that is not a simple solution, right? And and so and it's not a simple explanation and it's not a simple like troubleshooting. I am absolutely, if I try to do all those things underneath one exam a year with the annual a- exam anchor, I will not be doing that patient's justice in the short term or the long term. And um, and because of that, it's like, look, I, I have to have that separate visit to, to, I've identified the problem. I'm not even saying don't do anything. In fact, I think you should do something at the comprehensive about exam about that. I think, you know, in that mm-hmm. scenario, it's like compresses, lid scrubs, artificial tears, done. Right. And let's see how mm-hmm. you're doing. Let's dive deeper into this. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and I, I could never do the justice I would need to do to take care of that patient in the long term if I just tried to do it under the comprehensive, comprehensive exam. And knowing that and believing it. And I think that takes us back to our very first bonus episode a few, a few weeks back, Kyle is, is if I believe that, then I don't have any problem with the behavior of telling a patient. Look, Mrs. Smith, we're going to do X, Y, and Z because I'm seeing this, and I need to see you back in a month or three months or six months or whatever that interval is to to take a deeper evaluation to make sure that one, we're taking care of the problem as it is now, and making sure that we're not going to have other problems arise. And so I think to take that full circle, that becomes so important, and you have to believe that it's the right thing for your patient, uh, but you do have to break that cognitive anchor. So I, I guess I would say, you know, to wrap this up something, right, that, that as you said, creating that short list of conditions, we would love to work with you. Comprehensive Optometry Simplified helps you work through some of these things to remove that co- cognitive acre so that you can deliver the care that your patients deserve that will be rewarding to your practice so that you can deliver care to the fullest extent of your knowledge, education, and training. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you guys on the next one.